overwhelming sensation that we've done something wrong. And it was extremely powerful feeling I had that, that it was very, I, 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 felt, I have felt this feeling at other times and I was right. So I said, I don't know why, what we're doing here, but I'm getting out of here because there's something going on and I feel it and I don't like it. I want to get out of here. And I stopped the car and I backed it up and turned it around. And we were only out of the car more than maybe a minute at the most. And all of a sudden, just north of us, uh, the cloud began to open up in a, like a little bit of an oval, began to kind of open up the size that the moon would appear in this nighttime sky, two white glowing objects came in very slow. They were not flying as such. They appeared to be just electronically or magnetically floating. And as they floated overhead, five more came in behind them. And at that point, I totally went uh, ballistic. I was absolutely, and I don't mind admitting it, totally frightened because I have never seen this kind of awesome beauty that radiated fear. But if you are like a child, a small child taken to a zoo and brought up to the cage of a gorilla, the, the overwhelming fear that grips a child, that's the kind of fear I felt. They began to move over our heads and began to change places as if they were doing some sort of a little routine to show us what they could do and they radiate and, I'm, and that's something you need to remember they radiated a fear off of them uh, you could feel it you're in the presence of something awesome fearful and I grew up from about the age of seven or eight having other world experiences all of my life I have been involved in other world experiences um, for whatever reason. And I have experienced many things as a teenager and as a child and uh, even in adult years that were just startling things. Nothing compared to this. Nothing. So I got in the car and I cranked the engine and they got, they got in the car because they realized I was serious. And so they rolled the windows down and leaned out the window backwards so that they could watch while I'm driving away. And I tore out to the, the highway. When I did, Paul sitting in the back seat, Ivy in the front seat, leaning out the window backwards, they went totally ballistic to each other. They started screaming uncontrollably to each other, yelling, screaming at the top of their voice at each other. And what was happening is all seven of these beautiful things came right down over the top of the car, zoom, right down over us. I didn't, I wasn't seeing, I just saw a couple of them moving around and they were moving quickly and I looked out and I could see them moving around and I thought, my God, we're in trouble. Now it's not just that we saw them, they are, they know we're here and they're following us. They were telling me that what the seven of these um, disc shaped things were doing they would come together in a circle without touching each other, but all of this in a second. They would come together in a circle and blow out into a seven-pointed star, come together in a circle, blow out into a seven-pointed, back and forth, and they followed us out at 90 miles an hour. They were doing that, following us, following us out just that way, just that quick. And I decided, this was in uh, uh, late spring, I decided to rent a convertible and drive back up to Area 51 by myself, and no one knew this, and go back out to where I, we had had this experience by myself, which I did. And I drove out there in the afternoon when the sun was still, uh, it was dusk, but the sun was still up, because I wasn't about to go out there by myself at night. And I parked the car in the convertible, I parked the car, I got sat on the back hood with my feet in the back seat, and I said to them, I said, look, and I know you're here, okay? And I want you to know that I don't mind doing whatever it is I'm supposed to do. If I've got a destiny in life or a mission or whatever it is, uh, I don't mind doing it. But if it has something to do with you, then I'm going to ask you for two favors. Do not abduct me because I don't want to go anywhere. 
and don't frighten me in my bedroom. I don't want to wake up and find something in my bedroom I can't handle, okay? So don't mess with me, and don't scare me to death, and I don't want to go anywhere. But if I'm supposed to do something, if there's a divine plan of some sort where I'm supposed to play, then open the door, show me what I am to do, and leave me alone. And I thanked him, and I got back in the car and drove back, and uh, that was it. About a month later, now we're at the beginning of summer, I get a phone call from Paul, my, my publisher who lived in Escondido, right down by San Diego. And he's, he's telling me about this young lady who was a past life regressionist. And he said, you've got to go see this girl. She's sensational. Uh, being a, a very spiritually inclined, past life regressionist type of person, she has you lay on the table and take your rings off and you watch. And she's setting up the candles and lighting candles and doing some sort of a little ritual thing. And I'm just laying there watching her. I mean, Paul says she's great. We'll find out. And uh, she's talking to someone. And I'm laying there watching her and she's talking to someone. And I said, who are you talking to? And she said, oh, I'm talking to your friends who brought you here. And I said, oh, okay. Brought me to your house? She said, no, 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 no. Your friends who brought you to the earth. You've come here from another place. And they have brought you here to do something. I said, I've often wondered about that. Where did I come from? I mean, really, what am I doing here? And she says, well, and I'm just telling you what she said. She said, um, they are Pleiadians, and they have brought you here to do something and uh, you are ultimately going to be a um, emissary was the word an emissary for them they're going to channel through you they're going to use you and they will speak through you uh, and they have been preparing you for for many many years I said oh okay I don't know and then she goes on lighting some more candles and then she starts talking again and then she's laughing and I said what are you laughing at and she said, oh, they told me something funny about you. And I said, what? And she said, they said that about a month ago, you drove up to see Joe and Pat up at Little Alien in a convertible you rented, and you sat on the back of the hood with your feet in the back seat, and you told them you didn't mind doing what you're supposed to do, but you didn't want to be abducted or frightened in your bedroom, and they thought that was funny. Now, at that moment, I became very disorientated. I said, whoa, nobody knew I did that. No one knew I did that. I didn't tell anyone. And she said, yeah, they, they knew. She said, they're telling me you went back out there because uh, you didn't want to go out there in, at night because they scared you the last time. But that um, you went out there and sat on the back of your car and they thought that was funny. And I said, why would they see humor in a human being frightened? And she said, because if you knew who you really were, you know, that would sound kind of silly. And so I respected that. I am just telling you what she said. But to me, that was a very powerful emotional experience talking to her. Because she told me things that no one could have known but myself.